horrid dreams feel like deja vu? Why am I dreaming such awful things? Just two days ago, my gloomy morning thoughts were interrupted by Bates' knock at the door. Sir! Sir, open up! I must speak to you! Hold on, Bates. I'm there in a moment. What is it, Bates? They just called from Ashbury regarding a very serious matter. I think it is necessary that you go there as soon as possible, sir. Why? What exactly did they say? I spoke with the head nurse. She did not want to tell me what has happened. I am very concerned. Maybe some news of Sir Robert. Did she tell you anything more? She did not want to tell me anything specific, sir. Did you speak with Victoria about it? No, sir. I didn't want to disturb her. Hopefully nothing much has happened, but it would be good to know for sure. All right. I'll pay them a visit. In the meantime, keep this whole thing to yourself. Of course. And, sir, the weather is truly terrible. A vigorous storm is approaching. The sky is entirely overcast as though it were night. I have no previous recollection of such horrid weather. It is very strange indeed. Going to be a strong thunderstorm, that's all. But thank you for the warning. On the way to Ashbury, Bates's words resonated in my mind. Only the dark silhouette of the Ashbury Sanatorium quieted them. I wonder what news of Robert I will learn. Locked. It's Samuel Gordon. Can you let me in? Just one more. Mr. Gordon, I have terrible news for you. The head doctor is dead. Robert? What are you talking about? An officer and a detective were here. It's awful. How did it happen? They said they found his body at the old lighthouse. James was sitting right next to the body. James? He was just sitting there, gazing. He didn't even try to escape, just kept crooning some melody. I never thought that he would be able to kill someone. Where is James now? Where did they take him? Where he belongs, back in his old cell. It's going to be his home for life. So, Robert is dead. But if James had killed him, why didn't he run away? I'd like to visit James. Can you let me into the main hall, to his cell? How do you know where his cell is? Hmm? Well, Robert was in charge of this sanatorium, you remember? He told me where I'd find James. Sorry, I did not realize that. All right, then. I will let you in. But after what has happened, I cannot let you go in there alone. I will have to go with you. No problem. We can go then. You know the way, as you are so well informed. I'll be right behind you. Oh, not this. Wait here. I must fetch a doctor. What happened? feared most has happened. He couldn't return to this place. At least he died quickly.
I recognized that tag. Robert's keys. James wrote my name on the wall. Why did he do it? Someone has plastered over it. I'll try to get the plaster off. Damn, the blade cracked. Ralph, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can, Samuel. Uh, have you come to visit me? Or have you come to visit James? James? James is no longer here, Ralph. Why are you saying that? James is here with me. He's always here with, with me. I can hear his voice. He wouldn't leave me alone here. I need to ask you about something that concerns James. Yes. Me and Mr. Bubby will help you. Ralph, when did you last speak with James? Do you remember? Yes, Sam. What did he say? Did he talk about why he escaped? M maybe, but he was so terrified and was saying such a lot. He was very confused by it all. He kept s saying that he hadn't killed him. That's what he was saying. Robert? Y yes, him. What else did he say? He said he knew who killed him. That he knew. The name. Can you remember the name of the person he was talking about? No, no. I was confused. He also t told me he's saying goodbye and that we would not see each other again. He didn't want to be put in his room again. Ralph, please, try to remember who James was speaking about. I don't know. I really don't. He wouldn't speak then, and there was a long silence. I don't like such silence. All right, Ralph. I have to leave now. Okay, Samuel. Mr. Bobby says, okay. Ralph was the last one to speak to James, but I probably won't be able to get much more out of him. What are you doing here? Get out immediately! You have no business being in here! I set off for the old lighthouse on the sharp edge cliffs. The only possible place where I can find out something about Robert's death. So here's where they found Robert's body. see anything in there. Another symbol. I should make a picture of this one too. Done.
There's nothing more to be found out here. I'll go to the mall. Herman may know something new. Probably didn't hear the bell. I'll try again. He isn't answering. Strange. I thought he'd be at home. It's open. I'll have a look around. Where could Herman be? He left the door open and the morgue too. Strange, indeed. expression in his eyes. Who could have killed him? And why? He's clasping something in his hand. The fingers have stiffened and cannot be opened in their post-mortem spasm. The fifth symbol. microscope. Is this what I think it is? There are a few plastic bags under the book. I'll take them. 
there is nothing in them. Forceps should do the trick. The murderer has black hair. Hmm. James's hair was black as coal. I should go back to the sanatorium and obtain a sample for comparison. Someone's ringing the doorbell. I'd better leave quickly. Detective? Mr. Gordon? What are you doing here? I've come to see Dr. Herman, and... Uh, I know what it probably looks like, but I'll explain everything. What are you talking about, Gordon? I don't know how to say this. I found Herman downstairs. He's dead. What? I went downstairs and found his body on the table. That is a serious matter. Are you sure? I know what I have seen, Detective. His body is lying on the autopsy table. With the head off. With the head off? I must go there right away. Listen, Gordon, when you found him, were you alone? Was no one else with you? No one. Strange how coincidence tends to lead you to a corpse. He was already dead when I came around. I believe you. I know who is behind all of this. Really? Who? That lunatic who escaped from Ashbury a few days ago. Who else? Who else could possibly have committed such things? You remember that boy? And now, Herman. Disfigured. A normal person cannot have done that. That's certainly true, but he hung himself in his cell. I was in the sanatorium today. So, the murderer's punished himself. Mm. Oh well. It's justice, I say. But you haven't got any evidence. Gordon, there are several disfigured corpses and a madman was on the loose. You want more evidence? Hmm, no thanks. Good that you told me about him, Gordon. Now please leave. I've got to go downstairs and deal with this. Goodbye. Goodbye, Detective. Why would James want to kill Herman? He didn't even know him. I've got to get a hold of a sample of James's hair somehow and compare it with the chunk that Herman was clasping in his hand in his post-mortem spasm. Samuel Gordon, please, let me in. Just one second. Thank you. May I speak with you? Sure. Listen, I need to know something. Where is James's body? Excuse me? Don't ask. Just tell me where it is. Well, all right, if you must know. We cannot get hold of Dr. Herman. I don't know what is going on. So we placed the body in the old chapel in the graveyard until he arrives. It cannot stay much longer, though. It has to go to the morgue. That's all. Thanks. It's full of clean water.
Mind your own business. I've got no time for you. He's pretty skilled with that shovel. The boiler man probably would not like it. The boiler man... He won't let me in. He would see me. Can you tell me, why is that chapel in the graveyard locked? The old chapel? I'll tell you why. It's locked because nobody has any business going in it. Can you open it for me? No, I couldn't. Nobody is allowed to go there, like I said. But you have the key to it, right? Exactly. And it's going to stay that way. I have to get into that chapel at all costs. How could I possibly obtain the key? Why is the door to the boiler room locked? I had to start locking it during the day because of that runaway loom. As far as I know, he's the first one to have pulled it off. The institution has a very good reputation in this respect, and they don't want to lose it. That's the way it should be. Looms in and none of them out. How about you lend me your key? I'll return it in a little while. You could watch my wallet for me in the meantime. Hmm. Well, a little extra added to that lousy salary of mine would come handy. So, what do you say? Hmm. No, it's not possible. I can't do it. The head nurse would really enjoy the chance to fry my backside. I can't risk somebody finding out. Too bad. I'll keep the wallet to myself then. I won't be keeping you any longer. Good. The boiler man probably would not like it. This is the only way to get inside the sanatorium. I have no choice. I don't know what we could talk about. I can speak with him through the wall. It could use fixing. It's leaking. It could use its leak. I must be quiet so I won't get caught. This time, I wouldn't have any explanation. There's no one here. I've got to take advantage of that before somebody comes. How do I obtain the keys to that chapel? I'll have a look around here. I've got to come up with something. I can't see anything useful.
The door of the boiler is very hot. I will get burnt. spare keys. Just an old pair of rubber boots. Personal stuff. I'll leave it as it is. twice the size of my feet. The smoke from the rubber would go out through the chimney. That wouldn't help. The heat from the boiler is unbearable. I went a bit too far with those boots. Hopefully none of the smoke has gotten into the building. It's quite smoky in there. Perfect. We left the keys in the lock. I'll go. James's body. I need a little hair for comparison with the sample that Herman was clasping in his hand. I need to use something to cut off a little hair. I don't want to touch him with my hands. Broken glass. Okay, this should do. Where could I have a close look at it? Hmm. Well, maybe just. I'll go back to the mall and use Herman's microscope.
It's set up properly now. I can use it. It's set up properly. It wasn't James who killed Herman. But who was it then? Who's got a black? Morris. Today's menu, road deer on the cream, wild ball show, gamekeeper style. Harry's wife always did cook well. Good afternoon, Harry. More like evening, I'd say. Have you seen the weather outside? It's unnaturally dark. Yes, it's very strange. More than that, weather like this brings nothing good. I'm a bit superstitious, you see. Yes, I've noticed. But enough about the weather. Here in the pub, we're always comfortable. Will you have anything, Mr. Samuel? I don't think so. I I've just come to ask about things. I thought so. No offense intended. But, you're not exactly my best customer. The pub is deserted. Where is everyone, Harry? Everyone's probably staying at home. The weather is ghastly today. In fact, I'm not even surprised. There's no reason to talk. Harry is a cheerful fellow. He would put his hand in the fire for his wife's cooking. Morris isn't here. Where could he have gone? Morris's cap. I found a little hair. I should examine it closely. Maybe this sample will match the one Herman was clasping in his hand. A letter. Strange things have been happening around here. It all began a few days after the funeral of old Mr. Gordon, when his Mr. heir Samuel Gordon. returned to then the manor. Then his heir Samuel returned to the manor. I haven't got a clue as to what's going on, but when somebody finds this note, I'll be far away already. It seems to me that that detective wants to frame me for Henry's murder, so I won't be hanging around. I'm going to go while there's still time. 
Feel free to keep my last month's wage. And don't bother looking for me. I won't be returning. Morris. Morris has run away. I knew he couldn't be trusted. What if it was he who committed the murders? isn't the murderer I'm looking for either. But if it isn't him, then who? It's locked. as though he were watching me even now. Robert's diploma in medicine. Exactly 12? It probably doesn't work. sheds a strange greenish light. It sheds a... Assorted medical literature. Medical volumes. There's no point in skimming through these. Most of them are in Latin. Study of the human brain. Hmm. I'm tired, but I won't rest yet. Hmm, anatomy. Some medicine. I'd better leave it alone. There's a solution of a distinct color in some of the tubes. Maybe this is what Robert was working on all the time. The liquid in the tube smells very bad. A little key was hidden there. It can't be opened. It's locked. It looks like a security code. There's nothing else there, just papers and a book. Sophie, Robert's wife. She left him many years ago. Another key. Who's the man in the picture? I've never seen his face before. I have to find his place in the past and obtain his key. of some sort. Strange, there's no writing on it.
Robert has left this one opened. He won't be able to finish it now. Today's newspaper. I don't want to read it. May I speak with you for a while, Victoria? Of course, Samuel. What was in the Ashbury building before it became a sanatorium? I have no idea. I was never interested in that place. Why are you asking about such a thing, Samuel? I just wanted to know. It's not important. I think on one occasion, Robert mentioned there used to be a hospital for cholera patients there. That building has a terrible past indeed. Would you please excuse me now, Samuel? Bates. Yes, sir? Bates, I have just returned from Ashbury. I spoke with the head nurse, and... Any news of Sir Robert? Well, unfortunately. From your tone, I anticipate bad news? It's... it's worse, Bates. Much worse. Robert dead. What? Sir Robert? That's inconceivable. Oh my, I sensed something terrible would happen. All this time since Sir Robert disappeared, this is going to be a tremendous shock for Madam. Maybe it would be preferable not to let her know, at least for the time being. But how could we possibly not tell her about this? Bates, we cannot tell her now. Try to understand. We need to give this some time. But Madam will continue to look for Sir Robert. She will find out the truth by herself soon anyway, and things will be worse for her. Believe me, Bates. The later she learns about Robert's death, the better. Oh, you are probably right, sir. We have to give Madam more time. The news would destroy her right now. Would you excuse me now, sir? I need to organize my thoughts. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. Six, three, zero, eight. One. That is a year prior to building the foundation of the castle. Robert had more secrets than anyone would have suspected.
This is the right combination. More tubes with that smelly solution. Robert's diary. May 2nd. Tomorrow I will visit Dr. Herman in the morgue. If he understands what I wrote to him in my letters, it shouldn't be too hard to convince him. I think he's my man. May 3. The visit to Herman fulfilled my expectations. Our secret agreement will make further progress in my research much easier. It did not take much effort to convince him to cooperate, just as I expected. Herman understands that science and research of novel concepts sometimes demands sacrifices. He agreed to take care of the first delivery tomorrow already, which suits my plans perfectly. If it were not for him, I do not know how it would be possible for me to keep on disposing of those damn bodies. A few corpses disappear without a trace certainly will not be a problem for him as a pathologist. Last, I can resume work on the tests. May 8th. Previous tests were no use, and several months of work turned out completely futile. God's sake, where could I have made a mistake? Where? Calculated all the components almost a thousand times, and just haven't a clue as to what could be wrong. It's starting to make me tired. It's taking much too long. And with every new day, I'm afraid that someone will find out. It is with great luck that I convinced Herman to cooperate at the right moment. Either I improve the composition of the substance, or raise doses as they are. Otherwise, I cannot proceed further. Yes, that's it. The composition is correct. I merely require to raise the dosage. Yes, could have started sooner with them. I will raise the concentration by a hundred percent. May 9. He administered the higher concentrate to two subjects. I have to wait several days before I can make accurate measurements. At least I can now take a rest from all the figures and calculations. May 12. I thought I would not have to take any notes for the next few days, but I had a word with James today. He was acting differently than usual and spoke about things that must never come to light. He knows too much about the methods of my research and can expose me. And worse, they would believe him. Do not know what to do now. Locked in that cell of his, he's trying to corner me. How ironic. Never before have I considered direct violence. But he is a threat to all my efforts and everything that I have achieved. May 13. Things are apparently worse than I thought. The head nurse spoke to James, and she herself suggested to me that we should release him for some time. It was quite an effort to convince her that James must stay where he is because of his condition. I have no clue what he told her to make her believe him, but I'm afraid he may tell her everything next time. Must not happen. He is not the fool I thought he was. I have to get rid of him somehow. May 15. Everything I once held firm in my hands is beginning to crumble and fall like a house of cards. Higher doses have had no effect. I verified all the measurements twice. Do not know how to continue. The whole affair with James refuses resolution. He must never be allowed to return to Black Mirror. Do what has to be done. There is only one possibility left. Only one solution. I will dispense with the calculations and raise the ratio of the effective substance by another hundred percent. I know whose veins I will inject the serum into this time. Herman helped Robert hide the results of his experiments. The bodies of the patients would end up in his morgue and no one was to find out. It must be very old. Dear Samuel, it was not easy for me to find fitting words for these first lines that I hope you are reading. As well as it was not easy to find out where you were living. 
I hope that my letter will reach your hands as soon as possible, as there is not much time left. Since your departure, I have contributed all my efforts and endless hours of sleepless nights looking for the truth about our family. I feel that I am already very close to beholding its full face, and I am concerned that I might not have the strength to look at it alone. Therefore I am turning to you, Samuel, for I know that you will hear out my plea. In this envelope, you will find the ancient ring of our heritage. It is very important that you always have it with you. Take extraordinary care of it. I will explain everything when you arrive. Please return to our manor and help me. I know my time is closing in. I can feel it. I am afraid. William knew something, but now there's no way to find out what. Maybe I could have helped him if I had received the letter on time. I hope you're frying in hell. Can you hear me, Robert? It's a 3.5 millimeter. I have no clue what's in them. A chemical of some sort, that's for sure. There are dates on the labels, month after month. I, William Gordon, have decided to bequeath my possessions as follows. To my dear Victoria, I give and will all my personal possessions, the family jewels and valuables, as they righteously belong to her, to her heirs and assigns forever. To my grandson, Samuel Gordon, I hereby transfer the ownership of the Black Mirror Castle with all the neighboring lands. To him, I also devise the administration of our family residence. Let him take care of it properly, as I no longer can, to his heir and assigns forever. To my beloved son, James, I give the full right to live in his native residence for however long he should desire, until the end of his days. By this I hope to at least partially atone for your having to live in complete loneliness, my dear James. And lastly, to my firstborn son Robert. After long pondering, I have decided to deny the right to the property of our family. However, I do retain his right to his property and things that he has been making use of in our family residence. I know that you are well aware of the reason of my decision, Robert. In my eyes, you are no longer worthy of the name Gordon. These decisions I make of my own free will, and in the best of conscience, William Gordon. William's last will was apparently meant to stay hidden from everyone. Robert, I see now I didn't know you at all, you bloody beast. I would like to ask you about something. I'm listening, Samuel. Victoria, I was in Robert's study and I saw a picture of a man that I had never seen before. Is it someone from our family? A picture? You shouldn't have entered that room, Samuel. Robert does not like anyone to go in there, not even me. I merely tried to find something that would help us figure out where Robert could be. His things are all in order. Oh, good. He would be angry if he found out that you had been in his study. That picture is a portrait of our ancestor, Lothar Gordon. It was he who founded the sanatorium where Robert works. And when was that? Some 200 years ago. I'm not exactly certain. Ashbury has been a hospital of some kind for quite some time. Hmm. Tell me more about Lothar Gordon. He was chief doctor in a hospital for the mentally disordered for many years. 
In those days, however, they did not speak about therapy or medication. He would probably have carried on with his work if he had not fallen ill. What was his ailment? Over time, that place completely absorbed him. All those mad minds that he was spending days and nights with. In the end, he broke down, and his mind succumbed to insanity too. He died as one of those he was helping. A truly sad end. When Lothar died, where did they bury him? I see you are testing my memory. As far as I know, his body remained there as he wished. They buried him in a modest grave behind the sanatorium. Later, that place turned into a graveyard. Many who died within the walls of the sanatorium found their rest there. Would you please excuse me now, Samuel? It's Samuel Gordon. Please, open the gate. Gabriel Swen, deceased in the year 1805. Here rests Sir Nathan Hawk, who left this world in the year of the Lord, 1638. Let him find his peace in the new world. Damien Gale, our dear and beloved son, left us forever in 1814. To Jews Lord, our dear father, deceased in the year 1752, left his loving wife and children. There are no names on these, just illegible remains of memorial epitaphs. An unmarked grave. An un... The Gordon coat of arms. That's likely the grave I'm looking for. I need to remove the shrub first. There's our coat of arms on the stone tablet. That must be the grave I'm looking for. Scissors. I hadn't noticed it before. Damn, it's broken. They're useless like this.
The lid is too heavy. I cannot move it. Trash, junk, and garbage. Trash. A metal rod. I'll take it. No, the grave is empty. How do I obtain the fourth key? I can't stop now. I must carry on. May I speak with you? Sure. Tell me, the old graveyard at the back of the sanatorium, has it always been administered by Ashbury? Yes, as far as I know, it has belonged to Ashbury for at least the past hundred years. And before that? Prior to that, it was part of the Wormhill Parish, I believe. But as I said, that was a very long time ago. Thank you. That's enough. So, the old graveyard was administered by the Warnhill Parish. Hmm. That's all. Thanks. Father Frederick? Yes? Can I speak with you? Certainly, my son. I am listening. I need to research one of my ancestors. Can you help me? I would be happy to help you. But... I sense that something is troubling you. Would you like to discuss it? You would relieve your soul. Believe me. You are kind, Father. But I have come for a different reason. I promise. I will return again when I have finished what I must. Very well, then. What do you require from a servant of the Lord? I need to figure out where the remains of Lothar Gordon are preserved. I suspect there might be a record of it in the Chronicle of the Parish. Hmm. Our Chronicles reach far into the past. I believe I should be able to find the information you need. Please, come back later. It's going to take me a while to locate the record. Thank you, Father. The grate is locked. Father, I need to talk to you. Yes, go ahead. You have returned just in time, Samuel. I found the record you need in the Chronicle. Lothar Gordon was the father of Thomas Gordon, who was the father of William. His remains were buried near Ashbury, as per his last wishes. 
in Ashbury. After some time, however, his body was cremated and transferred into one of your family tombs in the graveyard of the vicarage. That is where it is resting now. Thanks, Father. You have been a great help. You need not thank me. I am happy to have a look at the Chronicles. Open the crypt. I won't be messing with his toolbox. Is anyone there? Who's there this late at night? Is it you? What are you doing here? That's none of your business. What are you doing here in our family tomb? Well, I'm fixing something. Look, feel free to walk around here at night. I'm not going to stop you. But leave me to my work. Not everyone feels like staying awake all night. I have to get this done by tomorrow. So do you want anything or are you wasting my time? So what exactly are you doing in our tomb? Like I said, I have to fix something. Are you going to watch me working or what? No. Actually, I need something from you. Really? Well, I don't think I'll feel like helping you with anything right now. I have enough to do myself. You don't need to do anything. I would just like to have a look inside. I'm looking for the remains of Lothar Gordon, and this is the last place possible. Why not just come back in the morning? I don't want you messing about there at the moment. Hmm. All right. So, how about you go have a look yourself? I really need this urn. Sure, I could do that, but... I would need a good reason, if you know what I mean. Will twenty pounds be good enough reason? Hmm... Yeah, I guess it could be. I'll have a look in there. Did you say Lothar? Exactly. Right. Wait here. It's going to take a while before I find. All right, I found it. Here it is. Oh, I'm not going to ask why you've come for it at this hour. Well, don't. This settles our agreement. I'm going back to my work. And leave me alone now. I need to finish here. I'll leave you to your work. Good. The sooner I get to my bed, the better. The flashlight might come in handy in this darkness. One more key left. Williams. 
There's only one way to obtain it. I fear the thought, but I have no choice. I must finish what I have begun. God forgive me. What is it I am saying? It's too dark. I can't see anything in there. Nothing's carved in the cross. It's too dark. I can't see anything in there. A shovel is lying on the heap. Got to get rid of the grave digger first. Peg is holding the door open. holding the metal door open. He won't be getting out easily. Forgive me, William. I had to do it. Fifth key, the last one. Somebody must have come to the vicarage. Victoria? Hmm. I'll have a look in the church. That was Bates. What is he doing here? Why did he go to the confessional in such a hurry? I must find out somehow. Someone is coming. Most likely Father Frederick. I heard footsteps a minute ago. Did someone come in before you? I didn't see anyone. You must have heard me. Hmm. Perhaps you are right. Is there some way I can help you?
No, Father. Thank you. In that case, I will depart. by a terrible secret. I know who has caused all this evil. I know who killed those people. I can no longer bear keeping this secret to myself, so I must confess. I saw him sneaking through the night, covered by the darkness, his palms they were stained with blood, a terrible sight. I hid quickly so that he would not see me. When I briefly looked into his face, I was stunned with awe. I still have his expression before my eyes. All this time, I remained silent. I could not tell anyone. They would not believe me anyway. Even I would not believe it if I had not seen his face with my own eyes. I am afraid of pronouncing his name, Father. Do go on, son. I know the devil has many faces. That night, I saw one of them. The face was that of the Lord of Castle Black Mirror, the youngest of the family, Samuel Gordon. That must be the hair of the murderer. The murderer has black hair. He said he knew who killed him. He knew. Of your blood, others will rise with your name, bearing my curse. One of your heirs will convert five souls of five mortals. This will be the catalyst to bring my anger back to life. And I will return. When your days have ended, there will be no one to stop me. Forgive him his sins. <laughs>